Hello again. The class is getting more and more compact. Um, this gives us a possibility to, to do it more like a seminar. So I'll take that opportunity as well. Um, before we start, uh, I just uploaded a, a link uh, on the front of the page, which is an evaluation of the HIMOLDX, HIMOLDX uh, video thing. So there is a group of students trying to evaluate that. So if you have had a look at uh, the videos or related to that somehow, please uh, fill in this quest back form, which is now in the message part of, of the front of the room. Um, last time we looked at some statistics for container ports and uh, uh, you presented and found the, the major ports of some different uh, geographical areas. Um, anyone who remembers what the average growth rate, not in particular for the areas, but on the world scale? 2.2. And you found some examples of ports that had a lower rate, even negative rates, and some with positive rates. Now, why would the port perform worse than the world average? What kind of reasons could be behind that? Any ideas? Or they make money. Sorry, they make money? They, they could, of course, still make money, but um, why, what is the reason why they would perform badly in any given? This was only for one the last year, so maybe they've had a good growth uh, before that, but what kind of reasons could be behind it? Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. You could perhaps expect uh, to be less stable for small, smaller ports, yeah? Maybe because the, the structure is changing, so uh, there is a difference between um, already developed countries and mm -hmm. developing countries. Okay. In developing countries, the, the growth is much more higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, you, we had some examples. Oh, I hit 75% light some five minutes ago. Now it's reacting. <laughs> Um, <coughs> that's a bit too much, but anyway. Let's go down to 50. There's really a lot of <laughs> sunshine here, isn't it? Uh, is that nice? You want, to, you want to fall asleep, right? I oh, know, I'll keep you awake. All right, okay, but, but apart from the fact that there might be smaller and bigger ports and so on, uh, what, could, what reasons could there be for ports doing well? In the, I mean, the, the factors that you mentioned between developed countries and developing countries is uh, sort of a long-term thing. You wouldn't expect that to be very different from one year to another. But in the shorter run, what could, what, which factor could play an important role in the short run? Yes? Maybe there was an accident at the port. Okay. Yeah, there could be, could be things like this, especially in smaller ports. Uh, they could be damaged by a vessel and so on, but that's a, that's a very specific reason. But in general, it's a, it could be about the competition with other ports, of course. You could have a major shipping line shifting from one port to the other. They could say that from now on we'll do business in the neighbor port. So um, it could be about that, but it could also be about uh, the regional economy. Uh, some ports uh, could do badly because their hinterland area is not doing so well with respect to, to trade. All right, today it's a different topic, environmental performance of freight transport modes. Uh, which is a rather big topic. We could have had a full lecture series on that, but uh, we're limited to this one lecture. And what we are going to address are these issues, uh, which are the problem areas, environmentally speaking. Um, and then a little bit to say something about the differences between emissions and impacts. It's not the same thing. 
um, not all emissions have serious impacts. Um, the environment limits of transport modes, um, we have maybe some uh, uh, prior knowledge of this and a media image of this and, uh, and we'll ask the question, are these images well founded or could they be questioned? And then we'll spend most of the time on a more case-specific approach uh, because you really need to dig into the cases in order to answer the question on, on which mode of transport is the, is the best solution, environmentally speaking. But since you did so, last, uh, so well last time, we'll do a shorter group brainstorming. And now you're very few students, so I think you will just divide you into groups of two. Or three? Okay. Should three maybe? One, two, three. One, two, three. And one and two. Okay. So group number one, number two, and number three. And this is a shorter thing. Um, you're supposed to make a small mind map. Did you get the numbers? Group numbers? Okay. So the number ones should uh, gather somewhere here. Well, this is just a sort of 15 minute thing. It's not, it's not a big task. So group number one. Group number two somewhere. Who's, who's number two? You're number two. And number three somewhere here. Okay, so the task. It's a four-step approach. First, just a few minutes brainstorming any environmental problems that you could relate to freight transport. What kind of emissions, what kind of impacts and consequences. And then you develop these keywords further. You know the mind mapping approach? just by freely associating uh, and putting down keywords and lines and associations. And then elaborate a little bit on each of these problems that you have identified in the first step. Why is it a problem? Who is affected? Is this something that's getting better or worse, you think? And then the third step is potential way of dealing with the problem. And then finally, when we finished, You'll draw your nice mind maps on the blackboard. Okay? And we'll talk about them. All right? Uh, we'll try to do it in 15 minutes. If you need some more time, we'll, we'll add a few minutes. So just get going. And stop the video. Otherwise